Hello and welcome to a new series here in Crusader Kings 2 with the Historical Immersion Project mod. HIP, if you are not familiar with it, is a collection of mods aimed at improving historical immersion, which adds a lot of cool stuff like new events and traits. It improves the interface, the uh, map and culture setup, and it has a lot of customization options, some of which I will be talking about because they are relevant to our current game as we get started here. You'll note I am loading a saved game rather than starting a new one. This is because there was quite a few things to do with the customization options and some other stuff that I wanted to do to set up our starting conditions here. So let's go through what those are. So the first thing I did was to convert all of the feudal characters via the relevant customization decision, which actually goes away once you use it, so I can't actually show it to you. Uh, which means that we have no tribal characters on the map, we're all feudal. That was necessary for one of the later things that I'll talk about. I have enabled gender equality, which again I can't show you, since we're going for an ahistorical start here, I thought, you know, why not? Uh, as well as that, we have become a merchant republic. We're here in Meath, by the way, the du jour republic of Meath. Um, I have also set up some rival merchant republics for us here in this area of the world because there aren't that many close by uh, in the default map setup. There is the Channel Islands here are a merchant republic, but apart from that, and in fact I don't think they're even a proper republic since this guy is just count level, but apart from that um, I have set up the Republic of the Northern Isles up here in the Orkneys, and to our south I have set up the Republic of Kent. So we'll have some competition for trade in this area. Uh, over further afield there are some other naturally occurring merchant republics here in Utland, for example, and Gotland, but it'll be a while before we encounter them. And the one last thing that I did, the decision that converts you to a merchant republic also gives you the entire du jour duchy that you start with, and that seemed like it was making things a bit too easy for us at the start here, so I gave away two of the counties that we otherwise would have to our neighbours here. Alright, so let's uh, actually get started here. I'm going to, before I take care of any of these usual starting things, unpause for a couple of days because we don't yet have our rival merchant families in the Republic generated. So let's go to about the 16th or 17th and see what happens. So we have our rival patricians. And it looks like we actually get this county back for some reason. I think it grants it to... I think the game wants to grant land to our rival patricians, so... Maybe that's why we got it back. Anyway, I guess it's not a big deal. Maybe, I guess, this city got created, in fact. Well, okay, so we'll have three counties to start with instead of two. I guess that's just fine. So, our uh, of our four rivals, two of them have actual cities, or two of them have actual counties, rather. Our two neighboring counties, and the other two, I think, are probably in these cities. They are. Donald Dove Ufergala, okay. Well, alright then, let's uh, start appointing people to our council and that kind of thing. So this is the updated version of HIP to, that goes with uh, the Conclave expansion. So we have all of the Conclave features, including the powerful vassal modifiers and the new council stuff. So we'll see what we want to do here. I guess we'll appoint Donal as our Chancellor, since he's a powerful vassal. Our current Marshal, Angus, is... Not a powerful vassal, so unfortunately I think he's going to have to be fired. Put this guy in instead. For steward, unfortunately our two powerful vassals are terrible at stewardship, so I think we'll just appoint somebody who's good at it, namely our courtier here. One of the effects of the gender equality module is that we can appoint women to our council, though I think as a republic we won't actually have the option to have female heirs. I think we're still limited to male heirs. So for our spy master, we'll put our other powerful vassal here, and we might not be able to appoint our last vassal who thinks he should be on the council. 
as our court chaplain, so instead we'll appoint you. I think we'll do just fine with uh, one of our vassals being angry about not being on the council. It is just one who thinks he should be there and isn't. Alright, so we have an unmarried heir. Our current heir is our cousin. And he is also the expected heir to the Merchant Republic as well, but I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Since it's not a game over if we get voted out. So we do need to choose an ambition. We do have some new ambitions available in recent versions of HIP. Uh, including to have five children. Change of province's culture I think might be new. I'm a great duke. I think we'll take the ambition to increase the size of our domain, since gaining this stewardship would be pretty useful to us as a merchant republic. And also, increasing the size of our domain is good in and of itself, and something that we're going to be trying to do. And I think we'll take the business focus, since I think the city of Vassal Opinion will really help us out, as well as the stewardship, of course. We do have two of our rival patricians as direct city vassals, so in fact, I think all of our rival patricians are city vassals. We have commander titles to give out. And I think we'll just grant these to the people who are best suited for the jobs. Actually, I shouldn't be giving these to people on our council now that I think about it. That's okay. We can swap them around later. And we need to select our designated heir. I think we'll just confirm our current heir. I guess we can't even choose him. Uh, we'll choose our eldest son then. Is this Donal here? And it says we have no heir of our dynasty, but uh, clearly we do, so this probably just needs to recalculate. Let's do our education tasks. We need a focus for our nephew here. Um, I think we'll probably just choose Thrift for most of our children in a Merchant Republic, because this will get us a stewardship education. I will choose some different things, why not? Uh, give him Struggle instead. And we need a an education focus for our son Aina. He's haughty, fussy, and paranoid. Which, let's see, go well with Intrigue. And that's about it. Alright, we'll get him an Intrigue education then. Alright, let's unpause for a second. I want to see if this no error dynasty goes or no error of our dynasty warning goes away. It doesn't. Alright, well I'm pretty sure this is erroneous and will actually be fine on succession. If not, I'm gonna be pretty sad. We do stand to lose some titles on succession, which is fine. This is because we're no longer the expected next uh, Grand Mayor or whatever. We're Grand Mayor, yes of Meath, but that's okay. So let's get our council working. Our Chancellor, let's see, we could start fabricating claims, but I think we'll be gaining land by other means. I think we'll just have him improve diplo diplomatic relations with people. I don't think we have any factions yet. Oh, we do have one count who's unhappy, so we'll send our Chancellor over there to deal with him. We'll train troops collect taxes, the capital, and we'll study technology? I guess we can't study technology anywhere, okay. In that case, we will try to uncover plots, capital. No need to proselytize, I think, everywhere is Catholic, so we'll send our chaplain off to improve relations with the Pope. Right, so the aim of this campaign is probably just going to be uni to unite the whole Kingdom of Ireland as a Merchant Republic, hence the Republic of Ireland. And beyond that, I don't know, I might just end it there. I was kind of hoping to do something that's a little bit uh, smaller in scale and scope than the previous HIP campaign, which was, of course, the whole Roman Empire. But we'll see if there's uh, something interesting we can do from there. We might continue it on longer. So let's um, unpause and get started here. Oh, actually, before we do that, we should probably get started building trade posts, since that's something that we want to do. Make money. And I think we'll start building one in our capital here. 
we can gain control of this sea zone. Maybe even one up here as well. Our trade post limit is four, and we have three of our rivals already building trade posts. So these are very cheap because they're in land that we control ourselves. So two there, and I think we can afford to probably build one more. Maybe we'll look a little bit further afield to next sea zone down. It's be pretty expensive here. Is there anyone we happen to have better relations with? 284. 290. 271 is a little better. We're down in Waterford. It's all more or less the same, so I think we'll just build it here since this guy is a duke and he's, I guess, likely to make the trade post a bit, uh, a bit more lucrative for us. It's quite expensive, but it should pay for itself at some point. So when that is, I really care to speculate. Alright, this guy has decided to abandon nomadic life and settle down somewhere with his followers, making a new homeland for the Karluk people. Interesting. We'll be happy for him, I suppose. Okay, this is another thing that I should talk about. The Prosperity Faction of Meath is now happy, and the Court Faction of Meath is now angry. This is a new-ish feature in HIP. There are now these interest factions, which um, have their moods improved or worsened by various actions. You can see the Prosperity Faction likes having good relations with its members. They like vassal tax privileges. They like the Leech having high wealth, which is... Something that we'd hope to have as a merchant republic. But we'll be trying to keep these factions happy. We can see that uh, faction members will have their mood displayed on their character pages here. But I'm not really sure what the consequences of these factions being angry are, but I guess we'll find out. Court faction strives for vassal autonomy and influence. Um, they are not very powerful though. Prosperity faction? is the happy one, so I don't think we need to worry about that too much, at least for the time being. I think they'll constantly be in the factions tab even if they're happy, so we shouldn't necessarily be worried by the faction appearing there. So our ambassador here asks us to join in for a small gathering of friends to dine and drink and forget about the world outside for a little while. Please be prepared to reserve a few days for this in case we truly get into the spirit of the proceedings. Of course, we'll come to his carousing party. Why wouldn't we? While making my way to a nearby village, I pass by a peasant relieving himself in a nearby field. He notices me and waves hello while he is still relieving himself. We can wave back even though it's awkward or walk away. It's still awkward, so we'll try to be gregarious, I think. Talking about our actual character, we are distinctly average. In fact, pretty below average, to be honest. But hopefully we can improve ourselves a bit as we go along here. We at least have the option to gain more stewardship, I think, from this focus. So our ambassador here, who is in the court faction, he has convinced the Lord Mayor of Rhea to permit him a meeting with the entire prosperity faction. If you allow it, I will attempt to gain their favor on your behalf, though I, of course, cannot guarantee success. We'll make the attempt, but the prosperity faction is happy anyway. I'm not sure if that really makes a difference to anything. Our nephew needs a focus for his education. He's fussy, haughty, and timid. So intrigue would be okay. We'll go with learning, I think. We have another one as well. Our son, who is brooding, playful, and haughty. Hmm. Stewardship might not be the best because Haughty works against him, unfortunately. I think we'll just go with it anyway and see what happens. His meeting with the faction did not go well, but he didn't make things worse. Okay. We lost a little prestige for that. A convoy flying the Uchinsula Standard was ambushed by pirates today while on their way home with their holds full of precious cargo. Thanks to the quick actions of the crew, they managed to turn the tables on the pirates and capture two of their galleys. Prize money will be divided evenly, but the lion's share goes to you, so we gain 100 gold, which is pretty useful. We might even be able to finance a third trade post with that. 
Except, uh, maybe not, you've just learned that the captain of one of your trade galleys has been selling part of his cargo to Ubrenon smugglers instead of delivering it as ordered, apparently hoping the amount sold would be too small to be noticed. The captain and his crew have been jailed, but the thieving scum had already spent most of their ill-gotten profits on spirits and women, so we lose 50 gold. So I guess we uh, average a profit there on those two transactions. So it could be worse. Oh, and I guess we're getting another similar event. A wealthy no local noble is hoping to escape the consequences of several indiscretions on his part against a female member of the Ufergula family. He's offered to pay handsomely for passage on one of your ships to a foreign port, where you can hopefully lay low for a few years. So we get another hundred gold. Okay, well let's uh, definitely go ahead and build another trade post then. So another uh, advantage to building trade posts is that they give you a CB to seize coastal cities, so we might have a look at doing that somewhere. Uh, one of our rivals is already building one here, but the county of Antrim has no trade post and is a single county duchy, so they might be an easy enough target to attack if we had a trade post there. And actually this is relatively cheap. This will give us three trade posts in the Irish Sea, which should assure us control over this for our family, which I think is good for income, though. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure how the Merchant Republic mechanics work when it comes to trade posts, except that building more of them is generally a good idea. You have arrived at the private rooms of our ambassador, Donald Dove. There is plenty of food and drink here, and the mood is decidedly merry. We are looking forward to this. Let's get it started. Hopefully this makes his faction happier. The court faction. He's brought out the board and pieces and suggests that we play a few rounds to determine who is the better strategist, and we'll play for honor. Let's do it. You played for hours, the tides of fortune ebbing and flowing as you tried to attack your opponent's positions without opening your defense too much. Eventually, you found a critical opening and made a few inspired and aggressive moves and won the game. So we get uh, Apprentice Board Gamer giving us plus one diplomacy. Nice. Reveling and carousing is over for now, time to get back to real life. You could say it was fun and gain 20 prestige or dedicate my free time to games now a game master giving us extra martial and diplomacy an extra same trait opinion uh, I think we'll just say it was fun and gain the 20 prestige just for the time being right so when are our first trade posts gonna be finished not till September of this year okay This guy has had his opinion improved. Uh, let's move our Chancellor somewhere else since I don't think it's really necessary to improve his opinion anymore. Maybe he can improve his own opinion of me. Or his faction's opinion. More to the point. The court faction has two members actually. But both of them I think are located in our capital county here, so our Chancellor should have a chance to work on both of them. I King Dermot of, Tarma, of Tara has died a natural death. Okay, this was our father, actually. So our brother now is the new High King. That's fine. I guess we're going carousing again with Donal. Uh, we're looking forward to this. Let's get it started. Okay. These days of revelry are an excellent escape. So many laughs and so many intense conversations in such short a time, it brings you closer to your companions. You feel like good friends already, so... He's gonna be my best friend. Well, that will keep our relations with him... I, at least. But we're off back to real life. No board games this time, apparently. And we should be getting our trade posts finished. We can see them appearing all over. Thanks to our other patrician families. Let's take a look at the trade zones map mode. So the Northern Isles have gained control of the Minch sea zone for the time being. Kent has also gained control of a sea zone down here. But we have control of our main sea zone here and we should be getting St. George's Channel, I think, once we finish construction of this trade post. But we already did. I guess we don't have that yet. 
Uh, one of our other families has a trade trade post in this zone. Okay, that's fine. Well, we'll be getting some income from those at least. Which is pretty good. And we'll be hearing the jingly coin sound every month for the rest of time. Got extra levy reinforcements and the court faction is now up to neutral, so I guess that's good. It is content with his liege. I think they can um, join the usual kinds of factions if they're unhappy, the members of the uh, interest factions. Young Aina has finished his education in the ways of intrigue. It's evident that he has excelled in his studies, so he's become an intricate web weaver. Okay. So our fourth trade post, uh, which I was building up here, is about to finish, so we'll see about the possibility of declaring war for the coastal city here, city of Dunseverick. This guy has no pacts of note, he has access to about 1100 troops which is about half our number, less than half, so we should have a pretty easy war to take his city. As long as the council approves, and they do. So yeah, let's declare this. He's already sieged our trade post, that's fine. And our Chancellor has improved the opinion of this guy, which is pretty good. He's the one who is annoyed at not being on our council, of course. Alright, the Ulster army has immediately loaded themselves onto some boats and is presumably landing down here. We'll see what they do. Doesn't look like they're coming ashore, actually, so maybe we'll just head up here and start sieging. But now they're landing. They were waiting for me to leave. Well, in that case, I think we'll take the opportunity to attack them in the plains when they're at low-ish morale. I didn't actually appoint good commanders here, but I think we're going to be just fine anyway. Right, they're on the retreat, presumably back up to Antrim, which is where we were heading anyway. Let's uh, not lead troops ourselves. Where's the don't lead troops button? Oh, there it is. Okay, they've evacuated before we got there, but I think they might not have enough troops now to successfully siege anything. So we should have a pretty easy time from here. are unfortunately annoying our vassals by having their levies raised, but hopefully we can lower them again pretty soon here. Our vassal here uh, approaches us and presents to us a request to buy a small plot of your land in Dublin. This is a hard decision to take, since he promises to pay well for the land. We can say that we do need the gold, we can gain the gold, lose, lose prestige, and have lower vassal... or lower castle tax in Dublin for ten years. And say there's not enough gold in your pockets to buy my land. Hmm. I don't think we care too much about castle tax. We do have a castle in here, but it's the only castle in the county. And I have to imagine most of our income is from Yeah, the Grand City of Dublin. You can see Dunleary is only 8.8. .8. So I think we'll take the gold. The prestige loss is unfortunate. I think that's okay. Ever since your pursuit of wealth began and you started keeping a close eye on both income and expenses, your coffers seem to be filled to the brim more often than not, so we gain aspiring trader for a plus one stewardship. Which sounds pretty good. And the court faction is now happy. 
There are two other interest factions, um, which I forget what they're called. I think there's like a military focused one and uh, some other fourth one, but I think our realm is probably just too small currently to have them appear yet, but I guess we'll find out in the future. We've sieged the top holding here. We have a new Pope. Only at 61%, but we should get to 100 no matter what once we siege the two lower holdings, if not before. Such a wonderful bouquet, the complex blend of flavors spreads over my tongue just as the warmth spreads in my belly. These monks certainly know how to make a fine wine. We can visit the monastery more often, gain one learning, maybe, and also maybe become a drunkard. Or we can say thanks but no thanks. I don't think the learning is really worth the risk, so we'll say no. So we are, it looks like, going to have to siege the last holding here, but it's going pretty quickly. It's a city. There are rumors that certain tax collectors in my realm are disgustingly corrupt. Unfortunately, I don't have any good evidence to back this up, even after a lengthy investigation. Still, the commoners are convinced otherwise. If I don't do something, they might grow restless, but on the other hand, imprisoning the officials without cause would be problematic as well. So I think we'll do the one that lowers revolt risk and gains us some diplomacy, even though it loses us prestige. On the other hand, we could probably afford to have some revolt risk for a little while here. Lower chance of a negative outcome with the traits we don't want to become paranoid or arbitrary. Proud would be okay. And I guess we did become patient. As your efforts of gaining wealth grow all the more determined, you sleep less and less, and sleeping is not a profitable behavior, so we gain the trait stressed. Which is unfortunate, but hopefully isn't going to kill us immediately. Alright, we're at 100%. We'll enforce our demands. And we'll gain the city, which should also fulfill our ambition to increase the size of our domain. They're up to 3 out of 4. Hopefully we can just take the same ambition again and use it to gain one more stewardship. Uh, I guess we don't get more stewardship. We do have the ambition to assemble a great council, though. With all of our councillors with a skill level of 18 or more, which I don't think is too likely in a realm our size, unfortunately. Uh, let's take the ambition to change a province's culture since that also gives us the possibility of gaining more stewardship, and I think the culture of our capital county here is different from our culture, which is Gaelic. Okay, let's bring our troops home and disband them. Oh, and I completely forgot what was going on in the world here. Uh, there was, of course, the Norman invasion of England and the Norwegian invasion, and it seems like Norway has been victorious there since... England is now under their control. And William the Bastard here is now attacking King Harold of Norway in his normal conquest, but he's actually winning that, so you could see England changing hands a second time there. Alright, well, on that note, I think we're going to end this first episode. Where the court faction is now down to neutral, that's fine. And uh, this being the first episode in a new series, it is especially helpful if you want to support the channel to click the like button. It helps out with search rankings and that kind of thing on YouTube. And of course you can subscribe for new episodes every day, but you already know that, I'm sure. But in any case, do please join me again next time. Thanks for watching.